we have learned that when a force acts on a body and a body is pivoted, then the force produces turning effect or torque. So the body will rotate based upon magnitude of torque and its direction will be decided by point of application of force and the direction of force. Now, in case there are two equal and opposite forces which are not acting along the same line, if they act along the same line then the resultant is zero. But in case they are not acting along the same line and a body is free to rotate then they, they form a couple and the moment of this couple is given by magnitude of either force and distance d between the product of these two terms f multiplied by d you can see here this is f multiplied by d this is moment of couple You have to be careful that we are not to add the two forces, but either of the forces multiply by the distance between them gives the moment of the couple. This moment of couple will remain of same magnitude irrespective of the point of rotation. We will prove this right now. First, let me give you examples of this couple. Suppose there is a tap. This is the handle. This tap is rotating about this axis. This is the tap. This is the handle. Now, to operate this tap, what do you do? With this finger you turn in this manner and with this finger you turn in this manner. You rotate the tap in this manner. So you rotate the tap, so this tap will rotate in anti-clockwise, in case you are rotating it in this manner. So we, I am applying two forces. These two forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction and they are not along the same line. The distance between these two forces is D. So this is the distance D between the two forces. Sim similar is the case with the lock, bottle cover, a steering wheel. Suppose this is a steering wheel. Now you want to turn left. Then what you do? With this hand you will give a force like this and with another hand you will give the force in this manner. So this wheel will rotate, steering wheel will rotate in this manner and the car will also turn towards the left. So this is a couple. So in day to day life we come across this couple quite often. Now, a question arises that we have, here two forces are required to form a couple, but with one force, we have learned last time that in case this is the body, it is pivoted at this point. Now, in case I give a force here in this direction, so this will rotate also in anti-clockwise. It will also rotate in anti-clockwise direction. So then, question arises that here one force and here two forces. The answer is, in this case also there are two forces. This is one force F. Other force is reaction of this pivot. The pivot will give the reaction such that a force F, same magnitude, that external force is giving and its direction would be opposite to this. So the line of axis are not same. This is the distance D. 
So this and this formula becomes same. Either force into distress D. Either force into distress D. Either force into distress D. So here in this case, both the forces are external. In this case, one force is internal, which is called the reaction of the pivot, and other force is external. So remember, what is coupled? Two equal and opposite forces not acting along the same line forms a couple. And moment of couple is either force into D. Now let us try to prove. Now so see this figure here. This is a rod of, le of length D. This is end is A, this end is B. Now, one force F is acting at A, other force F is acting at B. Similar like you can say this is the tap handle. So they are forming a couple. Now you consider any point O, any point, not at the center. Consider any point O between A and B. Then we will take moment about O. So for the force A, moment would be F into AO. That's what I have written. Moment of force about O. And force is at the end A is F into OA and its direction is anti-clockwise. And moment of force F at B would be F into OB about O. F into OB. So moment of couple would be addition of these two forces. If I add, I will get F multiplied by F. I am taking common OA plus OB. Now what is OA plus OB? OA plus OB is nothing but D. Therefore moment of couple is F multiplied by D. So this becomes the formula. So this is very important. In many sums couple. After understanding moment of force, moment of couple, now let us try to understand what do we mean by equilibrium of a body. See, if the body is free to move, we know that in case the force is applied, it will change its motion. And in case now a couple is applied or a pair of forces are applied, then the body will rotate. So when a body will be in equilibrium means the body does not change its state of rest or motion. If the body is stationary like in this room, there are various objects kept. They are not moving. They are stationary. Are no forces acting on them? No, forces are acting on them. Like each body has got its weight. So as it has got its weight, so that weight is supported. So there are reaction forces which support the body. Some wind is blowing over them. It creates some force on them. So there are various forces acting on the body, but still the body is stationary. So, the, so when various forces are acting, and still the body is stationary, then such equilibrium is called static equilibrium. Now there is another equilibrium called dynamic equilibrium. So pay attention to understand. This is very important. As the word dynamic means motion, movement. So means body is moving, but we say it is in equilibrium. So when we will say body which is moving is in equilibrium if its velocity does not change, if its rot rotational speed does not change. So then we will say it is in dynamic equilibrium. It will be clear by the examples. Consider you have started the car. As soon as you have started the car, the engine is developing power and so power is moving the car forward. So its speed increases initially it was zero, now it will go on increasing. 
but will it go on increasing forever no after certain time as the velocity of the car increases frictional force also increases a stage is reached when the power developed by engine is equal to the frictional force uh, uh, energy required to overcome the frictional force so both become equal and the velocity of the car will remain same in case you would like to increase the speed further then you have to press more accelerator or develop more power another example of dynamic equilibrium is the rain water as soon as rain drops leave the clouds they are at very low velocity but due to the attractive force of earth they are falling down and its velocity goes on increasing f is equal to m into a you have studied so when the force is is w acting on it uh, there will be acceleration so its velocity will go on increasing as its velocity goes on increasing the frictional force between rain drop and the air through which it is passing will go on increasing because frictional force is proportional to velocity so the velocity will go on increasing frictional force will go on increasing a stage will come when weight force will become equal to the frictional force further velocity will not increase and rain drop will continue to fall with the uniform velocity that it has attained during this equilibrium so these are called dynamic equilibrium similarly is the case with the aeroplane when aeroplane lift force takes the aeroplane up but a stage comes when the lift developed by the engine of the aeroplane becomes equal to the weight force of the aeroplane and when both become equal then the aeroplane will fly at that steady height because upward lift force has become equal to downward force so in this manner whenever a body is moving with steady velocities a rotating with steady velocity we say it has reached dynamic equilibrium okay so this was the meaning of dynamic equilibrium now what are the conditions for this equilibrium when will these conditions come so there are two conditions that should be met for a body to attain dynamic equilibrium first is resultant of all the forces acting on the body should be zero so that body will not should move in a straight line second algebraic sum of moments of all forces acting on the point about the point of rotation should be zero otherwise the body may rotate is it all right so these are the conditions to be fulfilled for a body to be in equilibrium for a pivoted body there is a principle of moment which says the same thing that because in case of pivoted body body cannot move in a straight line so the only condition is that algebraic sum of moments of all forces acting on the body about axis of rotation should be zero or in simple simpler terms sum of anti clockwise moment should be equal to sum of clockwise moment about axis of rotation so this is called a principle of moments now what do you mean by weight of a body weight of a body means the force with which earth attracts the body towards itself so earth is attracting the body towards itself with weight we write w m is mass of the body and g is acceleration due to gravity 
so that is weight of the body now this principle of moments can easily be verified by a simple experiment that i am describing to you now this is the meter scale horizontal rod at the midpoint o i have supported it from the roof then at the two points a and b i have attached pants so in the beginning my point o is selected such a way that the this uh, rod is in equilibrium means it is in a horizontal position both the weights are at the same height they are in a horizontal level now to put weights w in uh, the left hand side to put weights w1 in right hand side to put weights suppose it is we call it w2 and and adjust the weights in such a manner that the uh, meter scale is in horizontal position means again we are attaining equilibrium position so once that position is attained so it means now the net moment should be zero that is principle of moment this meter scale was rotating about this point o so from point o to a distance is l1 from point o to point b distance is l2 i will see i would i will see that w1 multiplied by l1 is equal to w2 multiplied by l2 w1 into l1 is in which direction it is in anti clockwise direction w1 is acting down so it is in anti clockwise direction and w2 into l2 is in clockwise direction so anti clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment and the, the meter scale is in equilibrium so this verifies the principle of moment if you add if the weights w1 and w2 does not satisfy this condition that w1 into l1 equal to w2 into l2 the rod will be in tilted position it will not be in horizontal position so this completes the this theory part so in the next session i will uh, solve some numericals based on today's topic and the earlier topics that we have studied thank you